New UK driving theory test number 8. Question 1. Your mobile phone rings while you're traveling. What should you do? A. Answer it immediately. B. Ignore it. C. Pull up at the nearest curb. D. Stop immediately. Correct answer. B. Ignore it. Explanation. It's illegal to use a handheld mobile or similar device when driving or riding, except in a genuine emergency. The safest option is to switch off your mobile phone before you set off and use a message service. If you've forgotten to switch your phone off and it rings, you should ignore it. When you've stopped in a safe place, you can see who called and return the call if necessary. 2. When mustn't you sound your vehicle's horn? A. At any time in a built-up area. B. Between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. in a built-up area. C. Between 11.30 p.m. and 6 a.m. on any road. D. Between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area. Correct answer. D. Between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area. Explanation. Every effort must be made to prevent excessive noise, especially in built-up areas at night. Don't rev your engine or sound the horn unnecessarily. It's illegal to sound your horn in a built-up area between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m., except when another road user poses a danger. 3. What's the purpose of road humps, chicanes and narrowings? A. To allow pedestrians to cross. B. To increase traffic speed. C. To reduce traffic speed. D. To separate lanes of traffic. Correct answer. C. To reduce traffic speed. Explanation. Traffic calming measures help to keep vehicle speeds low in congested areas where there are pedestrians and children. A pedestrian is much more likely to survive a collision with a vehicle traveling at 20 miles per hour than they are with a vehicle traveling at 40 miles per hour. 4. Why is it dangerous to leave rear fog lights on when they're not needed? A. Direction indicators may not work properly. B. Electrical systems could be overloaded. C. The bulbs would fail. D. They may be confused with brake lights. Correct answer. D. They may be confused with brake lights. Explanation. If your rear fog lights are left on when it isn't foggy, the glare they cause makes it difficult for road users behind to know whether you're braking or you've just forgotten to turn off your rear fog lights. This can be a particular problem on wet roads and on motorways. If you leave your rear fog lights on at night, road users behind you are likely to be dazzled and this could put them at risk. 5. What must you do at this junction? A. Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. B. Stop beyond the line, at a point where you can see clearly. C. Stop only if there's traffic on the main road. D. Stop only if you're turning right. Correct answer. A. Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Explanation. The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you're moving. 6. Which person's signal to stop must you obey? A. A bus driver. B. A motorcyclist. C. A pedestrian. D. A police officer. Correct answer. D. A police officer. Explanation. You must obey signals to stop given by police and traffic officers, traffic wardens and school crossing patrols. Failure to do so is an offense and could lead to prosecution. 7. What does this sign mean? A. Bend to the right. B. No right turn. C. No traffic from the right. D. Road on the right is closed. Correct answer. B. No right turn. Explanation. The no right turn sign may be used to warn road users that there's a no entry prohibition on a road to the right ahead. 8. What does a circular traffic sign with a blue background do? A. Give an instruction. B. Give directions to a car park. 
C. Give motorway information. D. Give warning of a motorway ahead. Correct answer. A given instruction. Explanation. Signs with blue circles mostly give a positive instruction. These are often found in urban areas and include signs for mini roundabouts and directional arrows. 9. What does this sign mean? A. Bus station on the right. B. Contraflow bus lane. C. Give way to buses. D. With flow bus lane. Correct answer. B. Contraflow bus lane. Explanation. There will also be markings on the road surface to indicate the bus lane. You mustn't use this lane for parking or overtaking. 10. What does this sign mean? A. Cycle in single file. B. Cycle route ahead. C. Cycles aren't allowed. D. Cyclist must dismount. Correct answer. B. Cycle route ahead. Explanation. Where there's a cycle route ahead. A sign will show a bicycle in a red warning triangle. Watch out for children on bicycles and cyclists rejoining the main road. 11. What does this traffic sign mean? A. Danger ahead. B. Service area ahead. C. Slippery road ahead. D. Tires liable to punctures ahead. Correct answer. A danger ahead. Explanation. This sign is there to alert you to the likelihood of danger ahead. It may be accompanied by a plate indicating the type of hazard. Be ready to reduce your speed and take avoiding action. 12. What does this sign mean? A. No through road. B. T junction. C. Telephone box ahead. D. Toilet ahead. Correct answer. A. No through road. Explanation. You won't be able to find a through route to another road. Use this road only for access. 13. These flashing red lights mean that you must stop. Where would you find them? A. Level crossings. B. Motorway exits. C. Pelican crossings. D. Zebra crossings. Correct answer. A. Level crossings. Explanation. These signals are found at level crossings, swing or lifting bridges, some airfields and emergency access sites. The flashing red lights mean stop whether or not the way seems to be clear. 14. How will a police officer in a patrol vehicle normally get you to stop? A. Flash the headlights. Indicate left and point to the left. B. Pull alongside you. Use the siren and wave you to stop. C. Use the siren. Overtake. Cut in front and stop. D. Wait until you stop then approach you. Correct answer. A. Flash the headlights. Indicate left and point to the left. Explanation. You must obey signals given by the police. If a police officer in a patrol vehicle wants you to pull over, they'll indicate this without causing danger to you or other traffic. 15. What does this sign indicate? A. A cycle route. B. A diversion route. C. A pedestrian zone. D. A picnic area. Correct answer. B. A diversion route. Explanation. When a diversion route has been put in place drivers are advised to follow a symbol, which may be a black triangle, square, circle or diamond shape on a yellow background. 16. It's essential that tire pressures are checked regularly. When should this be done? A. After any lengthy journey. B. After traveling at high speed. C. When tires are cold. D. When tires are hot. Correct answer. C. When tires are cold. Explanation. Check the tire pressures when the tires are cold. This will give you a more accurate reading. The heat generated on a long journey will raise the pressure inside the tire. 17. You're traveling behind a moped. What should you do when you want to turn left just ahead? A. Overtake the moped before the junction. B. Pull alongside the moped and stay level until just before the junction. C. Sound your horn as a warning and pull in front of the moped. D. Stay behind until the moped has passed the junction. Correct answer. D. Stay behind until the moped has passed the junction. 
Explanation. Passing the moped and turning into the junction could mean that you cut across the front of the rider. This might force them to slow down, stop or even lose control. Stay behind the moped until it has passed the junction and then you can turn without affecting the rider. 18. What should the driver of the red car, arrow, do? A. Quickly drive behind the pedestrian in the road. B. Tell the pedestrian in the road she shouldn't have crossed. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. D. Wave towards the pedestrians who are waiting to cross. Correct answer. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. Explanation. Some people might take a long time to cross the road. They may be older or have a disability. Be patient and don't hurry them by showing your impatience. If pedestrians are standing at the side of the road, don't signal or wave them to cross. Other road users might not have seen your signal and this could lead the pedestrians into a hazardous situation. 19. What should you do as you approach this overhead bridge? A. Be prepared to give way to large vehicles in the middle of the road. B. Find another route. This one is only for high vehicles. C. Move across to the right-hand side before going through. D. Move out to the center of the road before going through. Correct answer. A. Be prepared to give way to large vehicles in the middle of the road. Explanation. Oncoming large vehicles may need to move to the middle of the road to pass safely under the bridge. There won't be enough room for you to continue, so you should be ready to stop and wait. 20. A police car is following you. The police officer flashes the headlights and points to the left. What should you do? A. Move over to the left. B. Pull up on the left. C. Stop immediately. D. Turn left at the next junction. Correct answer. B. Pull up on the left. Explanation. You must pull up on the left as soon as it's safe to do so and switch off your engine. 21. Which shape is used for a giveaway sign? Correct answer. D. Explanation. Other warning signs are the same shape and color, but the giveaway triangle points downwards. When you see this sign, you must give way to traffic on the road that you're about to enter. 22. What does this sign mean? A. Buses turning. B. Keep right. C. Mini roundabout D. Ring road. Correct answer. C. Mini roundabout. Explanation. When you see this sign, look out for any direction signs and judge whether you need to signal your intentions. Do this in good time so that other road users approaching the roundabout know what you're planning to do. 23. On a motorway, when should the hard shoulder be used? A. When an emergency arises. B. When answering a mobile phone. C. When checking a road map. D. When taking a short rest. Correct answer. A. When an emergency arises. Explanation. The hard shoulder should only be used in a genuine emergency. If possible, and if it's safe, use a roadside telephone to call for help. This will give your exact location to the operator. Never cross the carriageway or a slip road to use a telephone on the other side of the road. 24. The road is wet. Why might a motorcyclist steer round rain covers on a bend? A. To avoid puncturing the tires on the edge of the drain covers. B. To avoid splashing pedestrians on the pavement. C. To help judge the bend using the drain covers as marker points. D. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Correct answer. D. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Explanation. Other drivers or riders may have to change course due to the size or characteristics of their vehicle. Understanding this will help you to anticipate their actions. Motorcyclists and cyclists will be checking the road ahead for uneven or slippery surfaces, especially in wet weather. They may need to move across their lane to avoid surface hazards such as potholes and drain covers. 25. 
who's legally responsible for ensuring that a vehicle registration certificate, V5C, is updated? A. The licensing authority. B. The registered vehicle keeper. C. The vehicle manufacturer. D. Your insurance company. Correct answer. B. The registered vehicle keeper. Explanation. It's your legal responsibility to keep the details on your vehicle registration certificate, V5C, up to date. You should tell the licensing authority about any changes. These include your name, address or vehicle details. If you don't do this, you may have problems when you try to sell your vehicle. 26. On a three-lane motorway, what does this sign mean? A. Use all the lanes, including the hard shoulder. B. Use any lane except the hard shoulder. C. Use the hard shoulder only. D. Use the three right-hand lanes only. Correct answer. A. Use all the lanes, including the hard shoulder. Explanation. You must obey mandatory speed limit signs above motorway lanes, including the hard shoulder. In this case, you can use the hard shoulder as a running lane, but you should look for any vehicles that may have broken down and may be blocking the hard shoulder. 27. You're going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? A. Areas with hatch markings. B. Hazard warning lines. C. Other drivers flashing their lights. D. Variable message signs. Correct answer. D. Variable message signs. Explanation. Follow the instructions given by the signs or by tunnel officials. In congested tunnels, a minor incident can soon turn into a major one, with serious or even fatal results. 28. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? A. When an ambulance is on its way. B. When bystanders advise you to. C. When bystanders will help you. D. When there's further danger. Correct answer. D. When there's further danger. Explanation. Don't move the casualty unless there's further danger, for example, from other traffic or fire. They may have unseen or internal injuries. Moving them unnecessarily could cause further injury. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. 29. A collision has just happened. An injured person is lying in a busy road. What's the first thing you should do to help? A. Make sure the injured person is kept warm. B. Place them in the recovery position. C. Treat the person for shock. D. Warn other traffic. Correct answer. D. Warn other traffic. Explanation. The most immediate danger is further collisions and fire. You could warn other traffic by switching on hazard warning lights, displaying an advance warning triangle or sign, but not on a motorway. Or by any other means that doesn't put you or others at risk. 30. There's been a collision. A motorcyclist is lying injured and unconscious. Unless it's essential, why should you not usually attempt to remove their helmet? A. They might not want you to. B. They'll get too cold if you do this. C. This could result in more serious injury. D. You could scratch the helmet. Correct answer. C. This could result in more serious injury. Explanation. When someone is injured, any movement that isn't absolutely necessary should be avoided since it could make the injuries worse. Unless it's essential to remove a motorcyclist's helmet, it's generally safer to leave it in place. 31. What's the main cause of skidding? A. The driver. B. The road. C. The vehicle. D. The weather. Correct answer. A. The driver. Explanation. Skidding is usually caused by driver error. You should always adjust your driving to take account of the road and weather conditions. 32. You're about to go down a steep hill. What should you do to control the speed of your vehicle? A. Select a high gear and use the brakes carefully. B. Select a high gear and use the brakes firmly. C. Select a low gear and avoid using the brakes. D. Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully.
Correct answer. D. Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. Explanation. When driving down a steep hill, gravity will cause your vehicle to speed up. This will make it more difficult for you to stop. To help keep your vehicle's speed under control, select a lower gear to give you more engine braking and make careful use of the brakes. 33. You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? A. Allow the cyclist time and room. B. Tap your horn and drive through first. C. Try to move off before the cyclist. D. Turn right but give the cyclist room. Correct answer. A. Allow the cyclist time and room. Explanation. Hold back and allow the cyclist to move off. Some junctions have special areas marked across the front of the traffic lane. These allow cyclists to wait for the lights to change and move off ahead of other traffic. 34. During which maneuver may you remove your seat belt? A. Driving slowly. B. Emergency stop. C. Hill starts. D. Reversing. Correct answer. D. Reversing. Explanation. You may remove your seat belt while you're carrying out a maneuver that includes reversing. However, you must remember to put it back on again before you resume driving. 35. What does the white line along the side of the road indicate? A. No overtaking. B. No parking. C. The approach to a hazard. D. The edge of the carriageway. Correct answer. D. The edge of the carriageway. Explanation. A continuous white line is used on many roads to indicate the edge of the carriageway. This can be useful when visibility is restricted. The line is discontinued at junctions, lay BYS, and entrances to or exits from private drives. 36. Turning the steering wheel while stationary can cause damage to which part of your car? A. Brakes. B. Engine. C. Gearbox. D. Tires. Correct answer. D. Tires. Explanation. Turning the steering wheel when the car isn't moving is known as dry steering. It can cause unnecessary wear to the tires and steering mechanism. 37. You have to leave valuables in your car. What would it be safest to do? A. Lock them out of sight. B. Park near a bus stop. C. Park near a school entrance. D. Put them in a carrier bag. Correct answer. A. Lock them out of sight. Explanation. If you have to leave valuables in your car, lock them out of sight. This is the best way to deter an opportunist thief. 38. When can you park on these markings outside a school? A. Not under any circumstances. B. When there's nowhere else available. C. When you're dropping off children. D. When you're picking up children. Correct answer. A. Not under any circumstances. Explanation. You shouldn't stop on yellow zigzag lines outside schools. Not even to set down or pick up children or other passengers. This is to make sure passing drivers and pedestrians have an unobstructed view. 39. Where's the safest place to park your vehicle at night? A. In a garage. B. In a quiet car park. C. Near a red route. D. On a busy road. Correct answer. A. In a garage. Explanation. If you have a garage, use it. Your vehicle is less likely to be a victim of car crime if it's in a garage. Also, in winter, the windows will be kept free from ice and snow. 40. You're on a motorway at night with other vehicles just ahead of you. Which lights should you have on? A. Dipped headlights. B. Front fog lights. C. Main beam headlights. D. Side lights only. Correct answer, a dipped headlights. Explanation, if you're driving behind other traffic on the motorway at night, use dipped headlights. Main beam headlights will dazzle the other drivers. Your headlights dip beam should fall short of the vehicle in front. 41. You're driving on a motorway at night. When may you switch off your headlights? A. When the motorway is lit. B. When there are vehicles close in front of you. 
C. When you're traveling below 50 miles per hour. D. When your vehicle is broken down on the hard shoulder. Correct answer. D. When your vehicle is broken down on the hard shoulder. Explanation. Always use your headlights at night on a motorway unless you've had to stop on the hard shoulder. If you break down and have to use the hard shoulder, switch off your headlights but leave your side lights on so that other road users can see your vehicle. 42. You're driving on a motorway. The car in front shows its hazard warning lights for a short time. What does this tell you? A. The driver wants you to overtake. B. The other car is going to change lanes. C. There's a police speed check ahead. D. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. Correct answer. D. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. Explanation. If the vehicle in front shows its hazard warning lights, there may be an incident, stop traffic or queuing traffic ahead. By keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front, you're able to look beyond it and see any hazards well ahead. 43. You've broken down on a motorway. When you use the emergency telephone, what will you be asked for? A. Details about your vehicle. B. The name of your vehicle's insurance company. C. But your driving license details. D. Your employer's details. Correct answer. A details about your vehicle. Explanation. Have the correct details ready before you use the emergency telephone. The operator will need to know the details of your vehicle and its fault. For your own safety, always face the traffic when you speak on a roadside telephone. 44. You're driving in busy traffic. You want to pull up on the left just after a junction on the left. When should you signal? A. As you're passing or just after the junction. B. It would be better not to signal at all. C. Just before you reach the junction. D. Well before you reach the junction. Correct answer. A. As you're passing or just after the junction. Explanation. You need to signal to let other drivers know your intentions. However, if you indicate too early, they may think you're turning left into the junction. Correct timing of the signal is very important to avoid misleading others. 45. In which circumstances may you use hazard warning lights? A. When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead. B. When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. C. When you're double parked on a two-way road. D. When your direction indicators aren't working. Correct answer. A. When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead. Explanation. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature. Use them when driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind you of danger ahead. You should also use them if your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. 46. You're dazzled at night by a vehicle behind you. What should you do? A. Break sharply to a stop. B. Set your mirror to dazzle the other driver. C. Set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. D. Switch your rear lights on and off. Correct answer. C. Set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. Explanation. The interior mirror of most vehicles can be set to an anti-dazzle position. You'll still be able to see the lights of the traffic behind you, but the dazzle will be greatly reduced. 47. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road? A. Bicycle. B. Car. C. Lorry. D. Motorcycle. Correct answer. C. Lorry. Explanation. The highest point of the bridge is in the center, so a large vehicle might have to move to the center of the road to have enough room to pass under the bridge. 48. What style of driving causes increased risk to everyone? A. Competitive. B. Considerate. C. Defensive. D. Responsible. Correct answer. A. Competitive. Explanation. Competitive driving increases the risks to everyone and is the opposite of responsible, considerate and defensive driving. 
Defensive driving is about questioning the actions of other road users and being prepared for the unexpected. Don't be taken by surprise. 49. What's the purpose of the Pass Plus scheme? A. To allow you to drive anyone else's vehicle. B. To give you a discount on your MOT. C. To improve your basic driving skills. D. To increase your mechanical knowledge. Correct answer. C. To improve your basic driving skills. Explanation. After passing your practical driving test, but you can take further training. One option is known as the Pass Plus Scheme. It's designed to improve your basic driving skills and involves a series of modules, including nighttime and motorway driving. 50. What should you carry for use in the event of a collision? A. Can of petrol. B. Fire extinguisher. C. Jump leads. D. Road map. Correct answer. B. Fire extinguisher. Explanation. Various items, such as a first aid kit and a fire extinguisher, can provide invaluable help in the event of a collision or breakdown. They could even save a life.